Robinson here, boxing fans. Chris Robinson here with Mickey Bay. Um, Mickey, last night you were supposed to fight. A lot of people were looking forward to you were the, to be the co-feature televised on ESPN Friday Night Fights uh, against Robert Frank on ESPN. However, it turns out you didn't fight. Uh, you decide to not go through with the fight, but there's a lot that goes on behind it. Can you kind of explain uh, what happened? Well, it wasn't that. Well, my match got switched actually on that day. Yeah. From being not only not on TV, but like the first or second fight. Yeah. Which to me was just a sign of uh, disrespect, you know, for a 10 round fighter of my caliber. You talking about a guy that hardly ever lost a fight in his life. I'm undefeated as a pro and almost an amateur. Yeah. You know, to just when I show up to say hurry up and glove up and fight in 30 minutes. And then the guy that made the decision to just, when I asked him what's going on, for him to just say, oh, I'm eating lunch and hang the phone up. My corner isn't there, none of that, no explanation. I sold all the tickets pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I was just like, okay, I mean. So you feel it was disrespectful because you, for weeks, you were led to believe you're going to be an ESPN. You told people watch it, then they just told you oh, 30 no, minutes God, Everybody knows that Google, all the writers know, you know. All the sites know, you know, fight hype, boxing scene, whatever. Yeah. They know, you know, you can see it. It was marked down. But, you know, like I say, I'm a realist, and I can't blame Bob Aram. Yeah. Because I know that it was, a, you know, pretty much Brad Goodman. You okay. know, just to be, I'm a real guy, so I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. Yeah. You know, Brad obviously had some problems with me and Floyd Sr. Okay. For meeting with Bob Arum instead of him. I don't know if he felt like. And this was months back, you were yeah, saying? Yeah, this was months back. And, you know, a couple of days ago, he let me know that he had a problem with that. Like, why did you guys, like, why can't we talk to our promoter? Why wouldn't we want to talk with our promoter? That don't make any sense for a guy to you know, be still mad about that for months ago. I said, Dad, you mad about me and my trainer meeting with my promoter? He almost felt like, oh, that was disrespectful to me. You could have just went through me or whatever. But I guess yesterday was his way of trying to, trying to show me, trying, because I can't be stopped. Yeah. But trying to show me, like, this is what I can do. I can change your fight on this day and belittle you. Yeah. And, you know, but that's what, you know, I don't let that get to me. And I'm not even taking it personal, you know. Yeah. I still forgive him, but I won't forget. Forgiving and forgetting is two different things, you know. But you're sure that it wasn't a case where maybe top rank shuffle things? You sure no, it wasn't? Not at all. Breath? You know, of okay. course they would have to, but I know the deep, you know, I'm not going to get into all the details, but yeah. Brad let me know that he had a problem with, with, okay. with that, you know, with me and Floyd meeting with Bob Merriman instead of him. He felt like. Yeah. It wasn't that he felt like what he was telling us, maybe we thought it wasn't accurate information, but we want to talk to the boss. That's the promoter. Yeah. No disrespect. I respect Brad's job and anybody's job in the office, but at the end of the day, Floyd Sr. wanted to know for himself and tell him what he wanted, you know, and we got closure from Bob. Had a great meeting, best meeting we ever had with Top Rank, and it was directly with, this, with the boss. I mean, can you knock that? No. Now, instead of going through with a fight to where it's off TV, you just didn't feel comfortable enough. It was to really only 30 go. minutes. My corner wasn't even there. I would have had to wrap my own hands and just run in the ring. Yeah. To me, I knew it was blatant. So, no, I, it's no way. You know, I'm a spiritual person, a good person. I believe in that term, all men created equal. Yeah. And I really believe in that. All men and spirits created equal. If it's good, when it's when I feel a bad vibe and somebody doing something yeah. on behalf of a bad spirit, I want to abide by it no matter what. I die before I let somebody disrespect me in the way that I felt, and I knew that's what it was. Because think about it. Not only was it switched to, like, the first or second bout, you could have put it later. If anything, you could have been blatant and put it later to where I still had time to warm up. Yeah. But like I say, that was supposed to be a slap in the wrist. Like, okay, this is what I can do to you if I need, if I want to. I'm going to show you that that I'm bigger than you or whatever. But, you know, that's not, none of that is, is uh, okay. you know, none of that can stop me, though. You know, I'm still happy and healthy, so. But where do you go from here? Like, what's your next move, Mickey? You know, we, everything will work itself out. See, I'm confident in the, in, the, in the person I am and the spirit I got. 
You know, I'm genuine. Look where I'm at. Look around. Yeah. You know, I get along with people. I never had an enemy in my life. The only problem I ever had was with a couple crooked business men in this business. Yeah. I mean, I get along with everybody. Always will, always have. No matter what color, shape, size, any of that. You know, that's just me. Everybody knows that. So I'm just confident in my spirit and the person I am. Everything will prevail like it always does. All right, Nikki. So that's the key. We appreciate it. Keep your head up, man. We'll be oh, talking yeah, to you, bro. Sure.